So, here we go. The story begins. Marie, our fictitious character in the story, she came to us with a prop. Yeah, so the horse's canter was flat, downhill, unbalanced, rushy. So typical, you know, a typical problem that a lot of horses have. It's a canter that is not very comfortable. It's a canter that you can't do anything with. Like it's not a canter with which you, in which you could ride movements. Yes. It's hard to steer. It's hard to control, and so on. And of course, she wanted a canter that is round and uphill and uh, bouncy, bouncy, buoyant, collected enough so that you mm. could do flying changes or half passes or pirouettes eventually in the you know, canter that's controllable, manageable, and fun to ride, more yeah. comfortable to ride. Right? So we identified the three main core issues that most riders, including our Marie character, has with their horse, and you very well possibly may too. And these are that the transitions are not adequately prepared to help the horse into the canter, that's number one. Two, the seat, the rider's seat is not helping the horse, maybe even hindering the horse. And three, the rider is not using any strategy or not enough strategy and exercises to help biomechanically gymnasticize the horse. Yeah, so in this video we'll look at issue number one, the transitions, and we'll explain to you why. Uh, the preparation for the transition is important and how to do the transition. And um, wait a second. First, let's introduce <laughs> ourselves. Yes, Here I am babbling away. Um, I'm Shannon Ritter. I'm Thomas Ritter. Uh, I've taught clinics all over the US and Canada and all over Europe, especially Germany, Austria, yep. Switzerland. Holland. <laughs> so and I've written a couple, couple of books. The so first one here was Dressage Principles based on biomechanics and I think it's already in the, the second edition by now mm -hmm. and then I wrote a book on long reining from the beginning through the Levard. Mm -hmm. so it's a, a guide basically do-it-yourself guide on how to long <coughs> rein and yeah. even if you've never done this before. And, and we have a, a series of ebooks. Mm -hmm. we run online courses, we've done many workshops and events yeah. and um, trainer seminars, all sorts mm -hmm. of things all around um, Europe and mm -hmm. North America. Yeah. And let's get started. Let's let's dive right into this. Yep. Transitions. <laughs> so with everything you ride, you can you can segment it into a preparation phase, mm -hmm. an initiation phase, and the main part of whatever movement you're trying to ride, and then you know, the ending of whatever it is you're trying to ride. And then the transition now falls a little bit into preparation and initiation phase. So the idea is that behind that is that uh, for each movement, each transition, each turn and so on, there is one particular balance that is especially conducive to this job you're trying to do. In other words, that's the balance in which it's the easiest for the horse to perform that transition or movement. And if you can get your horse into that posture, into that balance, you make his job easier. He may even think himself that Actually, it would be a good idea now to canter, for example. I because feel that, like yeah. cantering. Yeah, exactly. So that's the what you can achieve with a preparation. And then um, you get a better transition. Yeah. And when you get a good transition, you get a good canter. The quality of the canter depends on the quality, quality of, the, of transition. the transition. In a way, you can say the quality of the transition depends on the quality of the preparation in the yeah. lower gate. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to look at. That is why it is so important. And so mm -hmm. let's um, go look at an exercise yeah. and dive into that and we'll teach you uh, what it is and how you can use this, how you can ride it. So here's the exercise. It's simple. You can do it with younger horses, you know, that are not very far advanced in their training. You can do it with older horses. It's a very reliable exercise, mm -hmm. almost a foolproof exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you uh, it's it's for a transition from trot to canter especially. You could do it from walk to canter, but it works better from the trot to the canter because you have the momentum of the trot that helps. So you're trotting single track, 20 meter circle, and then on the open side of the circle you enlarge for two strides. So you see the dark green horses and uh, to enlarge you, you know, shift your weight to the outside. 
hind leg outside seat bone mm -hmm. and your inside leg and rein t tell the horse come with me we'll go out yeah so this transfers your the weight. weight moves yeah. over sorry yeah, your exactly. weight moves over and then your <clears throat> leg and rein tell the horse to follow <clears throat> your weight yeah, over exactly. so you are moving your circle <sighs> over yeah, yeah the reason is that the outside hind leg lifts the horse into the canter that's why it helps to shift the body weight of the horse and the rider onto the outside hind uh -huh. yeah. and uh, so that's the first half of the exercise the second half is then here the uh, uh, what's that teal color horse um, you apply two half holds when the outside hind leg is on the ground um, you can use your outside rein you can use your outside stirrup you can use your pelvic floor the point is to flex the outside hind so first you pile the weight on top of it then you flex the joints it's like compressing a spring and out of that flexion, that compression of the spring, you, the, uh, the horse can lift his forehand up, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and to get the timing, you know, if you're not sure when the outside hind leg is down, you would want to use your outside rein for the half halt. And so for two strides, when that outside hind touches down, you can look at the front legs. It's okay mm -hmm. to look at the front legs to get the timing right. Mm -hmm. But when the outside hind leg is down the front leg on the same side is lifting and going forward mm -hmm. and the diagonal front leg is on the ground so when the left hind leg for instance is on the ground the right front leg is on the ground so you can peek mm -hmm. to get your timing right yeah. no problem with yeah. that you won't always have to it'll mm -hmm. come together to where you can just feel where yeah. the legs are yeah. but everyone goes through that where you have to check you have to peek you have to think about it a mm -hmm. little bit no big deal you could make it even easier on yourself by posting on the wrong diagonal. Yes. Because then when you sit down, the yes. outside hinds on the ground, that would be really easy. So then you end up, you're, yeah. so you're on your light green horse, right? You're on the circle. Mm. Change to the wrong diagonal mm. on your circle and then ask for the enlarge. Mm -hmm. And then right after the enlarge, mm. two steps of enlarging your horse, that's mm. the dark green horse, to mm. the mm -hmm. outer circle. Then immediately, every time you're down in the saddle for two strides you say slow down mm -hmm. with your half halt yeah yeah, yeah. so to you know, formalize it a couple of things to uh, keep in mind mm -hmm. so the horse should move out one horse's width within two strides so you really enlarge only two strides so yeah. you don't not drifting you know forever uh, you know, across <laughs> the open space there so yeah. it's really two strides when the inside hind is in the air the outside hind is on the ground so all the aids are always given in the same moment of mm -hmm. the footfall sequence Good outside point. hind leg down inside hind up yes, this and large you can even say and large two syllables two strides makes it easy right and mm -hmm. afterwards the slow down also mm -hmm. <laughs> two syllables two strides and then you follow yeah. that and with then you ask for the canter and canter yeah exactly yeah. and when you enlarge the circle there's also a couple of things that are important um, the hips and shoulders of the horse should move out at the same time and the same amount mm -hmm. Um, on the hollow side, it could happen that the shoulders go out faster than the haunches and then the horse gets crooked and then you don't get a good depart. On the stiffer side, it can happen that the haunches go out faster than the shoulders and then the horse will lean on the inside shoulder and look to the outside and then you'll get the wrong lead. So it may be yeah. that you actually have to ride it slightly differently in each direction. Mm -hmm. On the hollow mm -hmm. side, you frame the shoulder more and prevent mm -hmm. it from advancing so mm -hmm. much. And you mm -hmm. ask the hindquarters perhaps to, mm -hmm. you know, you initiate the movement really mm -hmm. by asking the hindquarters to maybe advance a little bit more than mm -hmm. the shoulders on purpose. And yeah. then vice versa yeah. on the stiff side, where the horse has a tendency to swing out with the hindquarters and leave the shoulders mm -hmm. to the inside falling on the inside yeah. shoulder instead you're going to to ask the horse to move that shoulder over in this exercise yeah. on the hollow side you have to frame the outside shoulder well because mm -hmm. if the outside shoulder is faster than the outside hind leg so to speak the hip then the horse will fall onto the outside shoulder then he'll probably canter on the correct lead but he'll be crooked and downhill more or less or inverted and, and downhill so keep the horse functionally straight by um, keep you know keeping the body aligned with a circle line you just move the entire horse out mm -hmm. and to prepare it's good to to study these movements so instead of doing it you know enlarge slow down and canter the first time you could go enlarge and then half fold half fold and stop 
a few times. Mm-hmm. Right? So that Especially the horse... if your horse is not responding to yeah. your slow down. Yeah, Say exactly. slow down, and if you didn't slow down, then stop. Exactly. So you make a point <clears throat> of it, yeah. and, and the it, horse understands. It's good when the horse mentally adjusts to having to halt, because then he gets ready to slow down and halt and you know flex the hind legs, and he shifts the weight a little to the hind legs. And then at some point you can say, and now I've changed my mind, let's canter instead. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, but interesting part also of this this exercise actually is that when you feel like you have a hard time enlarging the circle so that doesn't go through basically the outside hind doesn't want anything to do with the weight he doesn't let you enlarge then the canter will be poor then don't even bother right if you can enlarge but you can't do the half halts the half halts don't go through the outside hind so there is no slow down he just pushes you know mm-hmm. straightens the hind leg and pushes then don't bother cantering because it's going to be a bad canter because you know we, we don't achieve that uh, starting position of having the weight on the outside hind and having the joints flex. So that's our um, preparation. That's what the, the right. prerequisite that has to be fulfilled. The Good weight point. has to be on the outside hind. The outside hind has to flex. And only then out of that flexion can the horse extend the hind legs of the joints and lift the forehand up. Mm-hmm. So if you're writing this exercise and some part of it doesn't happen the way it should, mm-hmm. don't continue mm-hmm. with exactly. the, with the next item on the exercise. Mm-hmm. Instead, of abort mission mm-hmm. and go back and either redo that or explain it mm-hmm. better to the horse. For example, um, if the horse doesn't enlarge well, mm-hmm. you could halt and instead move the horse in a full pass or mm. like in western called side pass mm. right where you move the horse directly sideways mm. yeah. from the inside mm-hmm. leg two from steps the, yeah. so you're really explaining to the horse mm-hmm. <clears throat> this is actually what i wanted because mm-hmm. the horse may not really be clear mm-hmm. he may not really know so it can be really helpful there to say okay i get it you don't mm-hmm. understand i'm going to explain it to you so you halt and you full pass the horse one or two steps to the side mm-hmm. and then you can continue yeah. And then come back around and try it again. If the horse, like he said, doesn't respond to the half halts to slow down, then halt to make it really clear. Yeah, to explain to the horse mm-hmm. what the halt always to informs do. the half halt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can picture the mechanics a little bit like uh, when you look at a bodybuilder, a human bodybuilder who has to lift those big barbells with the giant weights, you know. Um, they don't stand at a distance from that thing and, and lean forward and then try to somehow lift it up because it would break their back, right? They wouldn't be able to lift it, but instead they go right underneath it with you know, their knees on the other side, so to speak, and then they stand up. So they lift the weight with their thigh muscles, essentially, and then it, at the end they lift with their arms. And with the hindquarters of the horse, it's the same. If the hindquarters are far away from the center of gravity and from the body mass, um, then the joints will be more or less extended and all the horse can do is push the weight of the body forward and away from the hind end. It's like a, a wheelbarrow, you, you know, so the horse gets heavy and flat and low and mm-hmm. leans on your hands. And in order to collect the horse, the hind legs have to come under the body first, like the, the bodybuilder under yeah. that big barbell. And then they have to fold their, their leg joints and out of that folding, they can then extend the um hind leg joints and then that extension can be directed upwards into a canterly part for example so the more the hind legs are under the body and flexed before the transition the more uphill the canter will be yeah the farther the hind end is away from the front end and the more extended the hind leg joints are the more the horse will canter into the ground and be fast and stiff and uncomfortable yeah and hard to steer Yeah, yeah exactly so that's why this preparation matters that's why it's important to gather up the hind legs, mm-hmm. sit on them, and then let the hind legs lift you up. And there are many other exercises, mm-hmm. but this is a very simple <clears throat> exercise mm-hmm. that pretty much any horse and rider can do. You may need to break it down and explain mm-hmm. these elements mm-hmm. to your horse a little bit better, but pretty much mm-hmm. any horse, mm-hmm. any rider mm-hmm. can do this. Yeah. Yeah. So... Let's actually go look at video yeah. footage and yeah. look at this being written. Yeah. Okay, be, let's go. Make it really clear. Yeah. So here we have a video of the exercise. It's in slow motion. So you see the enlarge, the slow down, and then the canter. So see it again. And 
large and slow down and canter. So the horse was in training for like a month or so with Noor, our student from Holland, uh, when we did the, the video footage. So he was not very strong yet, but it's a, an exercise you can do with uh, horses that are not very advanced yet. So, and then we'll look at another horse and rider in real time, <laughs> not in slow motion. So, so, here we have Sarah from Australia with a warm blood, and there you could see the enlarge and then the two half holes with the canter depart. So she'll do it again. It's easiest, of course, if you can film it directly from the front or from behind. When you film from the side, it's not as clearly visible. So, and there you go. Let me see if I can backtrack just a tiny bit. So it's the when the inside hind is in the air. Oh, there was the candidate part already. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so the when the inside hind leg is in the air, you ask the inside hind leg to cross over that shifts the weight onto the outside hind and then you half fold so it'd be in large slow down and then canter so it's essentially four strides preparation and then you ask for the canter and usually that works pretty well especially if you've done it a few times the horses know it and they uh, and they know basically when you start that countdown sequence of aids to the transition they know what's coming and then it becomes easier and easier even if the first time around they're a little surprised sometimes but then if you do it two three times they understand they know what's coming next so here the other direction and and that was an interesting canter depart that was a little bit flat because you can see that these half holes didn't go through or they didn't happen maybe and then as a result, the horse gets longer. You see how the hind legs are now a little bit far away <laughs> from the rest of the horse. And then all they can do is push the horse into the canter and the horse gets faster. So you want to avoid that the horse trots faster before the up transition. It should keep the exact same tempo or actually even slow down a little bit so that the outside hind has to sit and carry more. And then you get a better lift, you get a more uphill canter. So it's good if you see an attempt that wasn't perfect. And uh, so Trot, and there was a little spook. And Trot was better after the canter though. And uh, So it's very important that the enlarging goes through and it's important that the half walls go through. If one of those or both don't go through, then I wouldn't even ask for the canter, but I would um, basically repeat it or, or interrupt that was better see there you could see how um, after the volta that she rode the horse was uh, more attentive and let the half holes go through better so as a result she had a better transition let me see that should be it let me so we look at it again so here the and large slow down and the horse lifts into the canter so in other words you ha you can already gauge by the horse's reaction whether you have a good chance of success or not and if you don't feel like you have a good chance of success don't do it that was pretty good so don't need to look at the next rider but uh, yeah so it's, it's good to have these these little control mechanisms built in where you can uh, uh, estimate you know how good the chances of success are or if it's better to interrupt and uh, re-explain something to the horse rebalance the horse put it back on the aids like yeah in the case when the horse spooks gets distracted or something then just interrupt the exercise and come back to uh, the walk or the halt prepare the horse and then start over so i hope that was interesting and i uh, hope you get an idea of what it should look like and uh, what you need to do then uh, Try it out with your horse and let us know what you could observe, if it worked, if it didn't work, or what problems arose. And uh, then I'm looking forward to the feedback. Any of course, any rider can improve their canter and their canter transitions by using a better preparation. And it's independent of the breed of the horse or 
the discipline you write, the tech you use, or also the training history. Um, if you have a better understanding of how it works, what to do, you know, why to do it, how to do it, you'll be able to make significant improvements in your canter and in your canter transitions. Mm -hmm. So, so you, yeah, just go download the PDF right mm -hmm. below this video and go try it out. That PDF has the exercise instructions in there. Go try it out. And then in the next video, we'll explore the next big core issue that many writers like our a little fictitious writer here in the story, Marie, but many other writers that we encounter have, and you may have this issue too, it's the seat. The seat can help or hinder the horse, and let's move away from hindering the horse and towards helping the horse. And there are many things you can do with the seat to help support the horse and even shape the horse's canter so it becomes more uphill, rounder, bouncier, you create this trampoline effect and expression in the canter. And you can do a lot of this with your seat. So you'll learn tips that you can implement right away to help you support your horse better in the canter. So yeah, in the meantime, though, go download that PDF. Go try out the exercise and then comment below. Tell us what difficulties you have with the transitions in the canter and then when you try the exercise, go ride the exercise and then report mm -hmm. back to us in the comments below. Tell us how it went. Tell us what questions you have around mm -hmm. it. What observations did you make? Mm -hmm. Was it easier in one direction mm -hmm. or the other? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what did you if, learn? if it worked, yeah, if it was yeah. easier in one direction than the other, also if it was more effective, was the result better in one direction than the other? Because due to the crookedness, that's always yeah. a possibility, you mm -hmm. know, that Certain Very exercises likely. work better on the hollow side, others work better on the stiffer side. And it might work and really well in both directions, mm -hmm. but you'll be able to tell it works mm -hmm. really well mm -hmm. on the left, for yeah, instance, exactly. you know, or the right, you yeah. know. Yeah. You'll notice that it has an even better effect in one direction. You learn something yeah. really interesting about your yeah. horse in this way. Yeah. And so go go do that. Go download the PDF, go try out the exercise, comment below, and then we'll see you in the next, next video. video. Yeah. Go have fun see with it. There? Yeah. Yes, yeah, you. Yeah.